Okay, um, this video is one of a set I'm going to show you um, where I'm going to talk about some other software tools. Of course, R is great and I must like R since I've spent the last few years uh, kind of getting to be a little bit of an expert in it and creating several courses at Truman and even being part of our new data science graduate certificate, which is almost totally based in the R programming language. I'm also not going to talk about Python, which is a leading software package for more general computing and coding purposes. You can use that to code up some fantastic data science, so don't let me uh, don't think it's anything else is true. Um, in fact, CS170, one of Truman's computer science courses, um, is all about learning Python at an introductory level, and we actually require statistics majors to take that class. Of course, there's other software packages like C++. You can use uh, web-based um, things, databases. All of those can do some actual cool data science, and you won't hear me say anything bad about whether or not you should learn any of those. However, this lecture is about a specific tool called Hadoop, which we actually don't teach very much of here at Truman. Hadoop is sort of a one version fancier of a version of R. Um, and the main thing about it is that it was designed to do distributed computing. That means rather than using a single computer, you actually split a big problem up among a whole bunch of computers. Um, it's kind of magical. Hadoop isn't even a single software program, but rather it's a platform of multiple software systems that work together. R is actually one of the software languages that's part of the platform, but there are many others, um, including database management and um, other things in this open source framework. So that's the other part of it. Everything in Hadoop is free software um, that you can make to work together. One of the cool applications of it is that it's for um, solving problems across multiple computers at once. So, I mean, we've been talking about random forest, so you could imagine um, you know, we've been talking about data sets like the Ames Housing Database, which have, you know, 6,000 uh, rows, 2,000 rows, and maybe 80 columns, and that's a nice medium-sized data set. But imagine maybe you have one that has 100 million rows. Maybe it's every uh, person who's been on your website site, or maybe it has 10,000 columns. We split the data into a testing and training set like you do, but it's still really big. Still, to do a random forest, we want to make 500 trees, but each one, let's say, takes 10 minutes to run on your computer. <clears throat> That's 5,000 minutes, or about three and a half days if you just have your computer do that and nothing else. Now, it's pretty easy to imagine if you had 100 computers like your laptop, we could imagine having each one of them make 50 trees. That would be about 50, uh, 500 minutes, so you figure that's a little more than eight hours, a whole day's work. And then at the end, you'd have to do some more work to look across them to do the voting to figure out what your actual prediction is. Um, you probably don't know how to code that, given, you know, just a little bit of coding we've done in the class, but it's still pretty easy to imagine that. What happens in practice is that if you have 100 computers, they're not all like your laptop. Um, maybe a few of them are super fast screaming new 10 times as fast as your computer machines, and the others are faster and slower. One of the things we talk about is the idea of commodity har hardware. Commodity hardware means um, that they're just things you buy at the store. They might even be low end. Um, they could even be um, things that have other purposes. Maybe your actual laptop is one of those computers, but you're also doing your regular computer stuff on it. Or you got a new computer and your old computer is going to be added um, as a node uh, to this distributed computing network. So, um, the question is, could we figure out how to give more trees to those screaming fast computers and still have those slower computers do enough useful things to make them worthwhile? Well, sure, and that's really the magic of Hadoop. Hadoop is meant to do this very quickly, how to spread the work across lots and lots of computers. And now maybe instead of taking 5,000 minutes or even 500 minutes, maybe the whole thing could run in 50 minutes, an hour. And we don't really have to think about the details, especially those of us who are statisticians, not computing people, right? I like to think about computers, but I'm not really a programming whiz um, like someone who works in hardware or database management. So Hadoop um, uses nodes to make this work. Um, and I'm gonna use a couple sort of public databases uh, to do this. Um, the Wikipedia page is actually pretty nice. Um, and there are different sort of, uh, things that go on, but MapReduce is what we call the thing inside. And the idea is you have a name node, which is a central uh, computer, which just keeps everything working. It actually doesn't have to be a super fast computer. 
and then a job tracker, which is a computer whose whole job is to assign tasks to the other machines. And then the task tracker, which does that at even a smaller level. So those uh, three computers are kind of at the center. And then you have these other data nodes, which are working um, on the actual problem. And the data nodes are the ones that you might have um, a whole bunch of different servers working on it. Um, with the idea of those uh, data nodes, again, certainly faster computers are better, but it's better to have 100 slow computers than one computer that's 100 times as fast because of the way we can get uh, these efficiencies over uh, the economies of scale. So instead of giving, you know, if you had 10 computers, and instead of making 500 trees, you give 50 to each one, you could say, let's start by each giving them four or five and see how they do. Then this uh, central uh, job tracker can say, oh, that one's really fast. It's not being used for everything else. Let's give it 100 trees. Um, this other computer, it's a much older computer. Um, maybe even it is one. It's in your house. The kids are playing Fortnite on it. And maybe it is a fast computer, or maybe it's not. So maybe we're only going to send it five trees to make. Or we take all the computers in our office, and while the workers are working on it during the day, it doesn't do this. But at night when we go home, uh, we have all the computers in the building working as uh, data nodes for this. Um, some people make jokes that it's sort of like uh, the Borg, right, that each of these smaller parts is just hooked together. Um, some of the best Hadoop servers are maybe 10 really fast computers and 100 old junky ones. Again, maybe the ones left over um, or servers that you bought. Um, there's actually sort of a market where you can kind of find computers that other people are throwing away and figure out how you can do that. The other thing you can do with distributed computing is you can have some of the machines be central located, but you could have other machines that are far away. So you could imagine a company that's getting sales data from each of its sites. So um, you could imagine a grocery store like Hy-Vee, we've talked about them a couple times. Every day at the end of the day, it downloads all of the data from all of its cash registers. It uh, then sends it off to the central place, Hy-Vee headquarters somewhere up in Iowa, right? And that would be cool. But you could imagine you have, you know, several hundred stores, each of which has a bunch of things, and that central computer might not be a screaming fast machine. So even thinking about what we've been doing, you could imagine the computer at the local Hy-Vee doing some of the data processing, maybe the dplyr stuff, um, figuring those out and doing that processing before it sends it back to the central server, right? So it's a little bit smaller file, maybe a little bit faster for that central computer to work with. Um, right, and if you think about it, you're like, well, Hy-Vee is not a very big company, but if you think about all the different products they have, each one of those would be a column in your uh, data set, right? Maybe 10,000 or 20,000 columns. Um, maybe you have a couple thousand customers a day, a couple thousand rows. So you can imagine you have a, you know, 10,000 columns, couple thousand row database you have to send every day. If you could make that even a little bit smaller, a little bit simpler, you could way speed up the way um, that computer is uh, sending its information. You know, there are stories from not that very long ago where it was actually faster to uh, pack up your computer in the back of your car and drive it to the other location rather than send the data over the internet. Um, that's probably not as true now as it is, but you could imagine if you had a ton of data or you were moving to a new site, it would literally be faster to drive the server, you know, send it on an airplane than it would be uh, to download it uh, mechanically using things. You could then take it a step further and maybe saying, rather than having that data processor at Central hy V, maybe one of the other stores has a lot of space or it got a little smaller or it's part of a, you know, strip mall where the other store nearby is empty. So we just take some of the empty space nearby and we put some servers in there. Um, and maybe you have five of those at different, you know, locations around the uh, region. Um, and I should mention um, that Truman is actually working to get a Hadoop space here in the near future. Um, we've submitted some grants. We're doing some fundraising. Um, I don't know how long it'll take it till we get here, but we're hoping to make courses that use it, not only for expert level people like stat and CS majors and minors, but also for end users who just want to solve these big data problems, which would include people in business or economics, also people in biology or the health sciences um, and astronomy and physics as well. Um, one other thing I should mention is you can actually access Hadoop through cloud-based services. Amazon and Microsoft will both uh, sell you uh, cloud computing time. Google will do that as well. AWS from Amazon is actually the largest of these. 
Um, you can purchase space on their parallel processing machines. Um, it's a little bit less private, so you would worry a little bit more about that, although Amazon, uh, right, they built this process for them to do their data science on, and so they have built extra servers, extra data warehouses specifically for AWS. Um, so um, the real magic of Hadoop is in the data processing and data management side. And so, you know, that's more of a CS problem than a statistics problem, because those of us in stat, we just want the problem to get broken up and we don't really care too much about it. Um, you could even imagine in a simpler sense, maybe you have an eight processor uh, computer. Um, if you do have a high end gaming machine, often they'll have eight processors. So you could actually run Hadoop on that single computer by, and use it to break up your problems into those smaller pieces. Um, and again, that's what a gaming uh, machine sort of does. Um, now, the second part of this assignment is asking you to look at a few links. Um, I have two that I especially want you to look at. One is called Hadoop for Beginners. It's from Katie Nuggets, and it has a nice uh, kind of explanation of Hadoop and how it works. A second one, which is called Hadoop for Noobs, um, has a cute video, and I want you to watch that uh, video with uh, buckets and uh, ponds. Um, the metaphor of a data lake is actually one that people talk about a lot, that your data is so big that you can treat it as a lake. Um, and then for your assignment, I'd like you to do a little bit of Googling about it. Maybe do Google Hadoop. Hadoop's a weird enough word that you aren't going to find anything else if you Google it. Um, and maybe look at an industry you care about or a company you care about. Um, or just try to find some other, you know, brief explanation about it. Then in the comments of the assignment, what you're going to submit in order to get your 10 points or five points um, is an explanation of that website. Maybe it's a good one. Maybe I should add it to the class. Maybe if I do make that Hadoop class down the road, it would be a good one to use. Or maybe just an explanation of how you could imagine a project that you care about, a problem that you think could be solved using Hadoop. So again, that's Hadoop, which is one of the other software tools that's really uh, cutting edge right now in terms of doing data science. 